Secretary of State Hillary Clinton recently concluded a three-day visit to Pakistan, a nation whose stability continues to be threatened by insurgents and terrorists. Some see the struggle as one between those that want to move forward and those that would turn back the clock in opposition to modernity. Today, we'll hear from a Pakistani-American businessman who believes that this may be the defining moment in the young nation's history. This week on Dialogue, Pakistan at the Crossroads. Hello again and welcome to the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars in Washington, D.C. I'm John Molesky. Each week, Dialogue explores the world of ideas and issues in international affairs, history, and culture. Our guest today is Muslim Lakani, chairman and CEO of ML Resources and ML Private Investments, LLC. He's an entrepreneur and philanthropist who for more than 25 years has developed natural resource projects, including oil and gas in the Middle East and South Asia. Mr. Lakani is also a member of the Board of Directors of the Atlantic Council and the Wilson Council, the Center's private uh, sector advisory group. So I want to welcome you to the dialogue and thank you for joining us, Muslim. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. Uh, the, uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, about a week ago, concluding a trip to Pakistan. Uh, very uh, interesting trip. Lots of blunt and, and candid exchanges with people in all segments of the society, not just with the leadership. In, in one face-to-face uh, -face encounter with some folks, uh, they were very angry about drone attacks. Uh, one gentleman said, these are executions without trial for those killed. Others told her that they, they felt as if they were fighting the U.S.'s war and it wasn't their war and that the U.S. presence in the region was negative. I want to get your insight into that. You've been living in this country for several years. And, you may, and you've lived in many countries in the Middle East and born and raised in Pakistan initially. Do you view the U.S. as a, a negative force, a positive force in that region of the world? What are, you, what are your thoughts? Well, firstly, I think uh, Secretary Clinton's uh, visit was very timely. Uh, U.S. administration in the past, uh, during President Bush's time, only dealt directly with President Musharraf. So it was one man to one man. And the President Obama's administration uh, is dealing with the entire Muslim world in a very different way. And his speech in Egypt was the one that really started everything by saying that we want to deal with you with mutual respect, and uh, which would build mutual trust. And we have lots of mutual interests that are very much aligned to get to, uh, today which is fighting the insurgents, fighting the war on terror. These are all, all right out there. And, and I think it's, it's an extremely timely visit that Secretary Clinton had. I'm guessing that even though you live here now, you still have lots of dealings in the region, just if not professionally through your business, personal contacts. Is that message, the change in tone from Obama and as reflected in uh, Secretary Clinton's visit, is it resonating within the Middle East, within the Muslim world, within Pakistan? Are people paying attention? Well. To start with the Muslim world and the Arab world, I think that when President Obama spoke in Egypt, you saw the reaction of the people sitting there. Uh, one of them got up and said, Obama, I love you. And as opposed to the, the last... Uh, he wishes he could get that reaction here. Well, yes. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's quite a stark difference from uh, the past president when he went to Baghdad. And uh, so that, that in itself was... A uh, great endorsement of President Obama's way of dealing with things. Can that make a difference? That can make a huge difference because, you know, in the Muslim world, the Islamic world, the Arab world, there's a, there's a beautiful word that says niyyah or niyat, as we say in Urdu, intent. The intent today is seen very differently as opposed to before. They, uh, you know, after the 9 11 attacks that happened, you know, Everybody was shocked at what happened in New York. Everybody. I mean, it was also the Muslims who were in that building, uh, you know, and, and it, was, it was these crazy people who had hijacked everything. And from that came a clash of civilization ideas, and all these things started. But, and then the Iraq war. There was more confusion that happened in the, in the Muslim world and the Arab world. And then there was this trusting of democracy, freedom, and liberty, which is 
which is a right of everybody. That's one of the reasons I came to this country. I celebrate that. But when you look at it from the eyes, from that side, you see that you cannot bomb or tank your way to democracy. You have to build institutions. And that's the way to democracy. When you have an election, it is not just about having an election. It is the process just starts. It's about the delivery by those people who got elected. So, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's an evolving situation. And in Pakistan, we are, we are way ahead from a lot of the Middle East countries uh, where people really want democracy. Uh, they, we have a vibrant uh, media. You know, there's over 60 TV channels, 24 hours. And they are in different dialects. And in a country like Pakistan where the literacy rate is, uh, you know, according to different studies, but I would say that it's about 40 percent, 50, 55 percent, I would say, is literate. Uh, television is reaching everybody. Mm -hmm. And these people are changing lots of, lots of different things. I mean, the movement of the, uh, uh, the lawyers' movement, uh, when the Chief Justice said no to uh, General Musharraf, and uh, the people got behind him, and the lawyers' movement happened. And it was an amazing, amazing moment that, you know, brought everybody together, brought the entire country together. And when people get together and the people movement starts, nothing can stop it. The, this notion that um, people are listening and the, ch the change in tone from the Bush administration to the Obama administration can reap long-term benefits. One theory out there is that uh, in this battle for hearts and minds, as it's been called, that Al Qaeda is nervous because people in the Muslim world are listening to President Obama, and now they have competition on the ideological level. Do you think that's true? Do you think that Al Qaeda is threatened by Obama's the, the reaction he got in the Egypt speech and the, the seeming popularity he has in many of those regions? I would certainly hope so. Uh, I think that. Uh these are, these are folks that uh, uh, the only way that you could tackle them was the way uh, President Obama spoke to the Muslim world and the reaction from the Muslim world, the Arab world. And, you know, the, again, the mutual respect side. These people don't respect the lives of ordinary citizens. Look at what happened just recently, a few, uh, few days ago in Peshawar. Uh, over yeah. 100, 115 people died. Right. I mean, there were Many young women, and, women children. and children, you know, dying in the streets. But the resolve of the people uh, saying that we are not going to give up our fight. We are not going to give up to these people the way we want to live our lives, to shut the schools down. The students came out on the streets. I mean, this is, this is incredible. But what is the, you know, uh, when, when Hillary Clinton was meeting with the group, uh, someone said to her that we know you had your 9-11, but we have 9-11s every day in Pakistan. And she mentioned what happened in Peshawar. What, what is the toll of that violence? You're speaking optimistically about the people's resolve in response. But is there a downside? Is, will this wear people down? It must be the goal of the so-called insurgents to wear people down. Uh, how do you, what is the toll of this violence? Well, if you, you know, I don't know the exact numbers, but what, I, what I've read or what I've heard is that from 2003 to today, there have been over almost 200 suicide attacks. Mm -hmm. There are 22,500 people killed in Pakistan alone. That's a huge number. Yeah. And of that, 3,500 3, people are, are military personnel, personnel from the police forces and others through suicide bombing. The rest are innocent civilians, children, women, who have nothing to do with this. You, I, you know, it, it's a defining moment for Pakistan where the people have stood up and said, enough, we don't want you. And this is the time that we really, really need to stand by. And I think that Secretary Clinton's visit was very timely from that.